primitive cultures developed an intimate and profound understanding of the natural world. The skills necessary to successfully catch wild fish are the result of years of failed attempts and keen observation of fish behavior. I have definitely had my share of failed attempts. It is now spring at the hut, and I have a lot of work to do this year. Heavy winter rains deeply nourish the land and promise an abundant harvest of wild fruits this year. The stems of desert rhubarb are crisp and juicy. I chew them to extract the water content, but caution is recommended because they are high in oxalates, which can cause health problems if too much is consumed. The design idea for this fish trap came to me while making my burden basket. Given the limited variety of resources in this region, I will use just two kinds of materials for this project. The first one is desert willow. Desert willow isn't actually a willow, but it has long flexible stems like a willow. These stems will be used to build the frame of the fish trap. Unfortunately, I let the coals burn out. Now I have to start a new fire. The bow drill method is a fairly easy technique for making a friction fire. I'm using a seep willow spindle on a perinolina stalk.
This is a technique to bend wood. When a green branch is freshly cut, it can be heated by the fire and then it becomes pliable like rubber and can be bent without breaking. This is a great way to form branches into almost any shape you want. Once they dry, they will remain in that shape. I need two hoops for the main body of the trap. Yucca cordage is used to hold the branches in place while they dry. The best way to do this is to bend each of the branches I need, leave them in the desired form until they fully dry, and then assemble the frame. But for the sake of time, I'm going to proceed way before they fully dry. This will result in shrinkage later on, but it should still work. This hoop will be the front of the trap. Now I'm constructing the bottom and sides. All these branches were bent by first heating those sections by the fire. This is my first time making a fish trap this way. I thought up this design because I was impressed by the quality and strength of my burden basket. I'm really just learning as I go. As I said before, desert willow isn't a true willow. The branches also aren't as good for weaving as those of certain willow trees that I've used before. But desert willow is the best material for weaving that I know of in this area. I also heated the ends of these four branches to make them bend.
Carving a shallow groove in the branches and then wrapping the cordage around them in the groove helps lock the branches together and prevent slippage. Yucca string is the other material for this project. Once the basic frame is finished, then it's time to start weaving the yucca string. I start by tightly securing one end of the cordage to the front of the trap. I weave the string back and forth from top to bottom and leave a space of about one inch between the strings. I have about 400 feet of string that I made from the naturally abundant supply of yucca plants that grow here. But making 400 feet of yucca string is no easy task. In a moment I will show you how I acquire the fibers to make this cordage. This is banana yucca. The leaves must first be cut, pounded, roughly separated, and then I soak them in water for a month or more so that the pulp will separate from the fibers. Then I scrape them with a stone, and finally between my fingernails. The final result are these clean white fibers that can be twisted together to make strong cordage. I made a video this year in March that shows exactly how I make two-ply rolled yucca cordage. I carved this simple weaving shuttle out of a branch to facilitate the process. It can easily hold 20 meters or more of yucca string. During this process, I found that the frame of the trap needed two more hoops for proper support. So I made two more hoops and attached them with yucca cordage. Then, after attaching all the parallel strings, I use this simple technique to continue the weave. I simply wrap the weft string one time around each warp. The tension keeps it in place. I continue this process of going around and around until the end. When the full moon rose, it illuminated the landscape almost like day. This morning I started working on the trap early so I will have time to try it out today. When I come to the end of a roll of yucca string, I load another roll onto the shuttle. Then I connect the two ends by tying them together with a square knot.
I made the cone for the trap in the exact same manner as the body, but I left a small opening for the fish to be able to swim through. Now I just have to attach the cone to the body and then try it out. It took me a total of about 12 working hours to fully assemble this fish trap. But that doesn't count the time invested to make the yucca string. I used over 300 feet of yucca string. It takes me close to 40 working hours to make that much string. I realize that the trap is a little crooked. That is just because I put it all together while branches were still green. It is best to let them fully dry after bending them so that they remain in the desired shape. Heavy winter rains eroded much of the river. Rocks now appear where there were none visible before. While walking on the rocks in the river, something in the water captured my attention. A freshwater turtle resting in the shallow water. I've seen turtles in this river before, but this is the first time I've handled one. I believe it is a western painted turtle. An interesting characteristic that I read about this species of turtle is their unique ability to tolerate freezing temperatures during the winter months when they hibernate. That adaptation may mean that this is the only species of turtle that can survive here. This turtle is very docile, probably just recently came out of hibernation. I'm going to make a little corral of rocks to keep them in. This dead calf has been here for over a year. I've collected several of the bones on previous visits, but this time I'm more interested in using some of the dry flesh for bait.
This is definitely the rawest rawhide I've ever worked with. I tied two pieces of rawhide to some yucca string and I'm going to hang it in the middle of the trap. Hopefully it will produce enough odor to attract fish. There are definitely fish here. Now the time has come to see if this trap will work. Two stones will be needed to hold the trap in place. Right away I can see several green sunfish investigating the trap. In this underwater shot, three different kinds of fish can be seen. Suckerfish, chubs, and green sunfish all swimming around the trap. The bait can clearly be seen floating in the middle of the trap too. An hour and a half later, I return to check the trap, and to my amazement, I see two green sunfish swimming inside. The two captives look like prisoners behind bars as they watch their companions swim freely outside of the mesh of yucca fibers preventing their escape. But as I raise the trap, one of the sunfish manages to escape through the bottom. He must have squeezed through the net.
I lost one, but this one isn't so lucky. Well, they both escaped. It's okay. They both were kind of small. The important lesson learned here is that this trap does work. This gives me a reference point for improvement in the future. But I'm not finished yet. I'm going to test it out at another spot next. Earlier in the day, I saw a lot of bullhead catfish in this area, so I'm going to test out the trap here, too. Half an hour later, there are no fish in the trap. While chasing fish, the painted turtle climbed out of the corral to be free. I wasn't planning to eat it anyway. It's just good to know that turtle is a potential food source here. I didn't catch any more fish this day, but I also didn't allow the trap to sit in any one place for very long. This is an experiment in passive fishing techniques to increase my chances in acquiring food. In the future, I will make more traps and experiment with different designs to find out what works best in this river for these fish. It's all a process of trial and error, just like our ancestors went through. But the collective wisdom of a tribe is more powerful than just one single person. So let me know in the comments what ideas you have to catch more fish with primitive methods.